to the picks and bands. It should be called bands and picks, actually, because those come first. The Aurelia will be taken away from Vizichachi, as we talked about that a little bit before. Target bands against Bjergsen. Yeah. Surprise there. Good call. <laughs> Not going to have his Zed left up. The qual or actually, Worlds heard him that. He went for Zed immediately to play in those matches, and it wasn't really something that worked for him. You can actually see they have a quirky band here, so you can tell they have something in mind that they want to first pick, because they don't want to risk uh, Unicorns of Love second rotating quirky in another power pick, so it, they, they have a particular first pick in mind with this. It does make me wonder if the Lucian is going to come up, and there's a very interesting band, Nunu. This is a champion that hasn't really shown up in Korea. No. It, it hasn't shown up yet today, and it hasn't been banned either, so... A van, however, does make Jat sad. <laughs> that is a true story. But I think Nunu is pretty good. I think he's he's a, he's, he's one of the, he's one of the top tier junglers. He has very I good objective control. Uh, when in, in a jungle where you're so poor, you're almost a support. Guess what Nunu is? He's a support. He can buy a side stone. He so can run it. You can play. snowball people. You can snowball your lanes literally. Like he's good to go. Oh, That's man. every jungler's response ever. But no Nunu one is extremely no boring. One, no jungler wants to play Nunu, but. Oh. The secret is all the coaches Wait, want you to play. Wait, I love this one now. <laughs> oh, you like it? Oh, I love it. Because he, he's a champion. You're just like all up in the struggle. You're just like, man, I got like boots and like this sight stone. And it's like 30 minutes in the game. Whatever. I'm going to like snowball some people. And there's the Pantheon pick. I, Yeah. Uh, Santorin's Pantheon's pretty scary. He can make some really aggressive early game plays. And I guarantee he's going to be camping mid. Yeah, mid really hard. Now, we hear teams talking about, obviously, the early dragons. Is that just too dangerous? We're going to see these in these games? Or could it actually be done? Oh, the level 3 dragon? Uh, I don't think it'll I, be done. I think in, if they get into like a 2v1 scenario where the other team is kind of like late right. swapping around, uh, you could definitely see that. But I don't think you're going to see any like cheeky, like, cheeky oh, dragon. I did my blue buff and I'm going to do the, right. the dragon. Absolutely. People expect that. So looking over at Unicorns of Love now. Nar picked up for Vizichachi. He took that in game one versus played, Lion Gaming. Really well in the, he that, did that game. very well in that game. He really places himself well. And it's easy to get yourself into trouble with Nar too. If you just pop out a Mega Nar and a little Nar, you're pretty much dead instantly. Pollution pickup. And that looks like it's going to leave a rumble and you know, possibly a I'm Silver really to come in here that's hovering. Yeah, I'm this really is, excited, yeah. they definitely had this. I mean, they were expecting that first round Lucian on the red side as well as mm -hmm. the Nar, but the Nar should do quite well in that lane against the rumble. So yeah. Dyrus may have a little bit of a struggle if they end up locking that one in. Now, we haven't seen the Sivir in a while, but talk about Pantheon Rumble Sivir. That is an all in Rush. engage composition. They are going to be trying to zerg your back lines really hard with that. Yeah, and this kind of limits the mid lane picks too out of Unicorns Alumni. Now, you can't really do that kind of pokey team comp that a lot of these uh, teams have been showing today because you have so much engage. You have Rumble engage, you have Pantheon ultimate, you have Sivir speed, and you don't even know what's, what's coming. You have Syndra, <laughs> like anything, even more CC. So. Yeah, it could be Lissandra uh, in the mid lane right here oh, too, yeah. depending on what the pick is and how comfortable Bjergsen is on that champion. And with so much happening uh, in the back line... Orianna wouldn't be horrible. Yeah, Xerath also wouldn't be terrible. I wouldn't like Xerath, honestly. Against the Pantheon, I just think he'll suffer so much early. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Xerath on TSM, excuse me. Oh, okay. Well, there is the Xerath from Unicorn to Love. The not so keen on, not so keen on the Xerath here for, for a people. No, I would be very worried about getting a uh, run down by Sivir. First twisted blind fate. pick TF, too. That's, yeah, that's, no, that's a good point. Definitely blind pick TF for Power of Evil. First one we're going to see here in the tournament. Map control really coming into precedence here for you, uh, Unicorns of Love. But there's a lot of kill pressure with TF and this NAR because if, you, if you're if you capable of communicating around that Mega, Mega NAR, NAR. Tra transformation and you can get up into that top lane against a Rumble who may be a little bit hard pressed in a 1v1, it could make for some interesting plays. Well, this is Zeref, like you called it. This is Zeref. And the Janna from Luskbly, maybe? Yep, so you have three moving forward and then you can just play protect the Zeref at the back Ooh. line with the Janna. No, I like it. Giant Sivir Boomerangs with Storm Shield on, really nice composition. <laughs> you know, even when you were saying that they might focus on Dyrus top lane, I don't think Dyrus means that. I think Dyrus is very much used to that. He'll get beat up constantly, and he'll just, like, plow through the game. Yeah. Um, and he's playing Rumble anyway. He doesn't need that many resources to be useful. Yeah, I wouldn't be That's surprised true. to see a 2v1 coming out of this as well, so they can... I mean, roaming around with Pantheon early game, and you have a Rumble backing up, or a Jan, or anything, like, any any kind of roaming duo with Pantheon. You have the CC there, and you have a little bit of damage with it. it you can do some pretty damage. And whoa, okay. Whoa. Whoa! Hold on. Wait a minute. All right, so we got a lock at LeBlanc. Uh, Is this jungle TF? Blanc's in already. We, well, we I don't went. know what to think about this. Hold guys. on, guys. All right. Speech <laughs> well, <laughs> this is <laughs> better rendered useless. <laughs> All right. Okay. Know Junglers. something we don't know. Junglers. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> I don't even know if this is stay. We can still go back and forth, but we're going to have to see what happens as we get into the game. We are going to be taking a short break right now, and we're going to have it is Kobe 
Joshua Jatliesman and Joe Miller to take you through the next game. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters here in San Jose. My name is Joe Miller alongside Joshua Jack Leesman and Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. I'm just going to give the floor straight to Kobe because he knows what the hell is going on with Jungle TF. All right. I have an inkling of what's going on. As soon as I saw it, my eyes kind of You're like, like I got this. There's there's a guy, Kaosep, this uh, Korean jungler. The Master Yi player. Yeah, he went over there. Yeah. He plays Master Yi all the time. I mean, what he gets when he doesn't get Master Yi is he goes with his TF jungle. Now, <laughs> we've already seen from Unicorns of Love, uh, Kikis, he's used the range jungle scale. Range junglers are really, really rare, but a big advantage that they have is leashing those um, large jungle camps because you get 10 soft resets on a camp before it will hard reset and start yeah. regenerating. So that's how TF can actually get through the jungle without taking a lot of early jam damage. You know, your initial thought is TF, he's so squishy, there's no way he can even clear. But he does that, he abuses the range, and so you uh, keep soft resetting the, the range. Okay. And I'm not exactly, I haven't and watched this. he throws this, a I, bunch of red cards. I, I haven't like, watched him go through an entire yeah. game with it yet, but I know where it's from, and I, and I know that that's how you start it off. So what's really interesting to me about this is this is the same guy who just played Jungle Kale. So, like, if it's about <clears throat> dancing the ranged aggro of the melee jungle camps, he should already have proven that he can do it. Right, and that's, that's how you start it off. This definitely opens up a lot of um, avenues as well. I, the theme of the day has been, like, jungle route diversity, and I've been disappointed in the junglers that just do the same thing over and over. There's so many options. Like, we already saw red buff straight into a gank level two. Uh, when you're TF, you can start out, you can do a similar thing. Like, you can get a gold card. You can have that on-demand stun and go for an early gank, or you can try and hard farm and clear. So the question is then, does Santorini now say, okay, he might be able to juggle the aggro, but will he be able to deal with a Pantheon up in his face contesting him on a buff? Ah, that's an easy answer. No, he will. <laughs> Pantheon will kill He's got to guess right. He's, he can't get himself caught in the jungle. That's the big thing. That's why level one warding is going to be huge this game. I really want to uh, see how much effort they put into, you know, getting that uh, early intelligence on the jungle routes. Well, here we go then into game number one. It's TSM versus the Unicorns of Love here in the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose semi-final. We heard it right there. Level one warding, level one aggression going to be key in this game. And well, Kikis, I guess if there's a time to prove yourself on the big stage, Jungle TF in the semi-final is probably it. Yeah, I mean, I liked his Kale. Uh, TF is it's kind of a similar thing. He identified Devourer is a really strong item right now in the current state. It stacks up really quickly. Um, it's a very snowball-y item, though. Devour really gets a lot of the power from the mid-game team fights. So once you complete it, if you get yourself into fights and you get yourself into skirmishes, it stacks up incredibly quickly. TF is really good at that because he has a semi-global teleport. So uh, if Kikis can, you know, get rolling post uh, 
devour completion, then it can be really scary. I think in normal circumstances, I'd want to talk about the lane matchups, you know, how <laughs> Santorin might work really well with Bjergsen and you know his potential for the North American scene. Uh -huh. Right now, I just want to go to the top lane. I want to zoom in on Twisted Fate, and I want to watch him jungle. Because <laughs> that's, that's honestly what I'm interested in right now. <laughs> there you go. Not the whole time. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, if he starts Krugs right here, not only will he be able to stun things with his gold card if he really wants to, even though I don't think that's what he's going to clear, every fifth auto attack will apply a stun uh, to the jungle minions after he smites this buff. Stop him taking as much damage as possible here with the threat of Santorin making a bit of an appearance on his jungle camps. We'll see about that, though, as Unicorns of Love are starting top side. Actually, Santorin is going to be pretty much mirroring him on that bottom side as well. And there is the kickoff. Meanwhile, Lust Boy, we heard it on the analyst desk earlier on. He harass loves him. to get in the enemy jungle and harass. Hey, that was great because he has just heavily delayed their level two and also made them take a little bit more damage there. And it delays them getting to lane. One of the big things that people, uh, a lot of the AD carry and support players in the pro scene were complaining about is that the team on red side can do that Krug really quickly, or do the Gromp really quickly, and they get to lane first. But he's just delayed that and switched it, so Turtle was actually sitting in lane uh, first, and he gets to control. I still feel like... Unicorns of Love got the experience advantage there, though. Yeah, because they, they, they did still get do. the Gromp, and they only got about three minions before they were able to delay it. Yeah. He, he really didn't take that much damage. No. That was really good jungle play there, and his smite will be back up shortly. So level two was hit first here by Unicorns Love. We saw the first hook coming out there as well. <laughs> All right, well, the TF is going for the early gank. He went crazy yeah. into red. Now he's, he's going mid. He's got the call card. Oh, oh, no! Can they get it? Bjergs and the other chains are going to come down. He's dead. First blood going to kick his with the jungle twist and fate. Yes. He said if there's a stage to do it to make your name, hey. that's it. Hey, Pantheon has a good game because of Flash Stun. You know who else has a Flash Stun? Jungle I, Twist of Fate. I, I told you, right? He could, go for, he could go for the gold card gank, and boom, he does it. Pulls oh, it off. so good. Bjergsen was not respecting it, and they pay for it. Unicorns of Love, first blood. Well, let's see if Quickie's... I'm happy about that one, by <laughs> yeah, the way. I'm really happy. I mean, you called that one, so that's, that's, you've got to be happy about that. I'm really curious how many people are going to try and Jungle Twist of Fate and not know how to do this. Like, this is actually really impressive, the spot he's standing so that it's fake leashing back to him and really not hitting him at all. Right, so the, there's, the difference between the soft leash and the hard leash is that yep. hard leash, it starts with generating health and then you lose a lot of time. So if you mess that up one time, it puts you really far behind uh, on uh, any range, yeah. range you, jungler that you're trying to do. Plus you have to be really careful about the 10 soft leashes because you can't do that for too long, otherwise it'll just run back, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, right now, Kick is showing an obvious mastery <laughs> here of the new jungle. And really not taking much damage whatsoever. Got himself a first blood. And now he may be on his way towards that bottom lane. Already level four here, so he's going to have destiny before we know it. It's awesome. And his skill order, he's not even pointing any points into the queue, which is what a lane Twisted Fate would max. He's got two points in his pick a card and two points in his stack deck right now. So he's just about auto attacking, walking into lane stunning somebody. Right. That's why I, I say it makes me think he's going for that devour, uh, try and get yep, the attack there speed daggers. on hit TF build. And he's going to get it really quickly with that extra first blood money. I said it's just a snowballing item. That is the way to snowball a jungle twisted fate. He's going to get to level six really quickly, and then every lane has to worry about him. Oh, Bjergsen might be in trouble here once again. Power of Evil, though, just going in for a bit of harassment. Of course, it was Bjergsen that went down first. Actually picked up an earlier scrying orb here, so he's going to be throwing out that. Where is Twisted Fate? Is he coming towards me? What's <laughs> going on with that one? Is Vizzy Chachi uh, going to turn into Mega now? Actually, that lane's very even at this point. You know, I was kind of surprised that, you know, a team that just got into the LCS was voted here. And, and you know, how do Unicorns have so much fan support? They're such a new team. But now I definitely understand it. How can you not love this team? They're the team that played Poppy. This is the team pulling out Jungle Twisted Fate. Yeah, they played Cassiopeia You can hear well. the fans. Like, they're def they definitely already have huge fan support. And it's going to be a... Uh, an exciting EU LCS, I think it bodes. And a thousand gold ahead of TSM. Let's not forget they're the high seed. America's number one going into the playoffs or into Worlds, to be fair. And right now it's the new boys, the Unicorns of Love from Europe that are showing them a thing or two. Of course, there's still plenty of time for that to all change, for TSM to settle in. They were without doubt, I think we can say safely, the favorites coming into this match. 
and I want to see if Santorin can match some of this early game jungle presence from Kikis' Twisted Fate. He's behind on him as levels. He hasn't even attempted a Pantheon gank or an early dragon, so I feel like he's actually forfeiting a lot of his early pressure by being fairly ineffective. Well, we'll definitely see when both the junglers hit level six because they both have that opportunity for That'll be fun. very, very long range ganks. And it's I a feel stack like deck max on Twisted Faith, by the way. Yeah, it's all for that that on hit build that he's going. Um, but I really also want to see how Bjergsen deals with this uh, because he was the recipient of the early TF aggression and he has picked up the early scrying orb as well. I do like that on um, Zareph just because if somebody does get super far, you can always mm. find them. But uh, we'll see. He's probably going to hug one side of the river and continue to use it there. Well, it's like we might be seeing the first recalls here in that bottom lane. Wild Turtle just pushing up with his uh, boomerang. And they will, in fact, be recalling. And probably Unicorn's love will follow suit straight away. In fact, Wild Turtle deciding to stick around for now, along with Lost Boy. And they're just going to keep that farm going. Still very, very even. Vardag's got a ever so slight advantage in terms of farm. And we can see that Twisted Fate is actually going top side now. Level five must be five and a half. So I think he's been sat on that level five for a little while. Yeah. And then, then we see how good he is with this Twisted Fate. All right, well, let's go over some normal things here. TSM, pretty decent ward coverage so far. They've got defensive pink set up on that bottom side of the river. So uh, Bjergsen does have uh, one side that he can hug. Plus, they're prepped for the dragon. Not a lot of vision here established for Unicorns of Love. They had a really exciting start there with the Twisted Fate getting off to a, a nice beginning. But really, they're going to have to follow it up. Uh, important first activation of the TF Ultimate. Because he does have that first blood, he has mm -hmm. that experience uh, lead on Pantheon. So there's a small window where they have that global advantage. But probably red buff here. Going to give Santorin the opportunity to answer. Dang, the small well, minions have more experience than them. There he goes, yeah. So double level six for the junglers. Devour on oh, one guy. He's though. going right away. He's beating him to the punch. Well, Kiki's is a little bit slow on that one. Dyrus already starting to move back. And you can see though, the damage that Kiki throws out there quickly. Yeah, but I mean, Dyrus, as they said on Analyst S, he's used to being the recipient of ganks. Immediate flash, doesn't take any unnecessary damage, immediately blows that cooldown. And uh, TF, first TF gate nullified. And I feel like TSM is trying to play as controlled a game as possible in fairly uncontrollable circumstances, seeing as they are against the jungle Twisted Fate. Dyrus, though, picked into a very difficult lane, having to go up against Nar. If TF can actually create more pressure in mid lane to allow Power of Evil and Edge on Bjergsen, that kind of hurts the entire Santorin Bjergsen synergy that I've been hearing so much about. It's like, how Santorin doing on TSM? Everyone I talk to, they say, oh, he camps for Bjergsen and then Bjergsen carries. But I haven't seen that necessarily in this game. I'm waiting for Santorin to get involved. And we'll see what these ultimates are going to be like out of Sunscreen. There is a blue buff given over to Bjergsen. First bit of synergy that we've seen from those two. <laughs> well, as we said, uh, you know, they've established a very good foothold on the bottom side of the map. Really, there's only one ward from Unicorns of Love. is that one pink ward. So we'll see if TSM does end up making a move uh, sort of positioned around Lust Boy and Wild Turtle down there. So, Unicorns of Love coming back into that bottom lane. Actually, both AD carries running with the BF Sword and Doran's Blade. Only difference really being the boots that Vardags was able to pick up. And he's still just a couple of CS in the lead. We'll see once this minion wave comes through. It'll be a really not a massive difference between the two whatsoever. We also saw Twisted Fate heading back home and has got his enchantment now. He actually had that before his last back, so he's oh. already been stacking it up. He's had the Devour Enchantment for a while. The first blood, not to mention the fact that Twisted Fate gets extra gold when he last hits things, got him to that point all so much faster. So he will be a, a late game force, so to speak, if he can stand in close range and auto attack, which to be fair, you generally can't do on Twisted Fate. But yeah, six uh, extra Devourer stacks right now. So that's an extra six damage on hit to go with the 40 base from Devourer. Yeah, yeah I mean, we mentioned, you know, how the potential for snowballing with this Twisted Fate. But you're right. It is a very vulnerable champion. Uh, auto attack Twisted Fate. And there's so much threat here on TSM. They've got super long range. Rumble and Zareph. That's why we see early magic resist already coming out from Kickus. A jungler who junglers 
don't usually buy magic resist till a lot later. Because there's so much long-range magic damage threat for him, uh, he's already preparing for that. So we'll see how well TSM uh, can deal with that back line. Well, if we look at the gold, about 1,500 at this stage. There is Kiki's coming through. Actually, will be spotted by that ward there from TSM. However, Lust Boy coming up the river is going to be caught out here. And Ooh. has to flash away. So no flash on the support, which you have to feel for Power of Evil X, especially is going to be a juicy target. Exactly. Yes, LeBlanc is pretty good at avoiding ganks right there, but that's a pretty big negative for him leaning against Bjergsen takes away I'd say even more of his kill pressure so much than his escape because now if he wants to stay safe he's not allowed to use distortion aggressively and it should allow Bjergsen some pretty easy farming. Bjergsen with that has been able to put down some damage onto that middle outer to, uh, turret and actually that's good damage I guess you just in. Go Power hard. of Evil is gonna land there but Santorin was just around the corner and Power of Evil not able to push through. Both of them going dangerously low, I'd say, at this stage. And if you just have to look at summoners from that point then and see the barrier, which could play a big effect along with the flash. Power of Evil needs to be a little careful how close he comes at the back, actually dodging away from the stun. And, well, really well done there to bait in Santorini's a stun card comes down. There's a hook as well onto Lost Boy. Evil uh, ultimate coming out. And it is Power of Evil wow. that gets the kill in the end. That was remarkably well done right there to get the stun common with everything else a bunch of really low health people on unicorns of love pick up the kill on lust boy who had burned the flash so they actually really make that earlier flash trade which seemed like a bad thing trading a mid lane flash for support but actually turn it into a kill and extend their lead over team solo mid and they, they actually got that kill onto LeBlanc this time. So that's going to be pretty yep. big for Power of Evil as well. Uh, he has rushed that Morello Namakon, so that was a big uh, point of power for him. Let's see if they can take back control of this river, though, because it's been pretty much TSM control for most of the game. Thresh doing his best. Yeah, saying we actually saw him in that earlier best of three, not scared to move up into the enemy jungle and make sure that they've got those wards down and actually got one by the red camp, won by the raptors as well. And for now, Santorin waiting still, farming himself up, not being really involved, not thrown down that man drop up until now. And we'll see exactly what his idea of uh, pushing these lanes is going to be and where the target will be is Power of Evil once again going in towards Bjergsen again manages to get the chain so Brokhoff and Bjergsen finds himself low for a second, third, fourth time in a row. Yeah, I'm really interested in how Power of Evil is going to continue to play this since he beat Bjergsen to the Morellonomicon. He's really punishing him as of now until Bjergsen has another back. And Dyrus is getting ganked once again. He's going to have Flash. Oh, Flash comes in. Actually, the cold card did land. And there's Whoa. a Flash over from Busy Chachi. He's going to try and get the kill here. Throws out his ultimate as well. Dyrus in a lot of trouble. Is the damage there to finish off? You have to feel that it is ultimate coming out. Oh, he's oh. still running away. Meanwhile, Bjergsen's gone down in the mid lane. Dyrus is still alive up there. And Busy Chachi actually is waiting for the minions to come through. Dyrus had got rid of them all. Ooh. And they've backed away. Great escape there by Dyrus, in all honesty. I thought Fizichachi was going to oh. close out that kill once he was able to get the wall stun from the Gnar ultimate. And yeah, we're going to have to get a replay of that mid lane fight because Power People being able to solo Bjergsen is tremendously potent. Yeah, we can see. He, he had been trying all game, just going in, yep. bursting down every single time. They finally got some ward control on the side as well. So he had the confidence that Pantheon was not here to counter gank. And you can see he goes... Double uh, W's for his distor uh, w yeah. distortion there, just to close the distance. I feel like that was Bjergsen just underestimating Power of Evil's damage because he landed a point-blank stun onto him and still got burst down because Power of Evil just landed his spells and knew the damage numbers better. Yeah, and you also have to give some credit to Thresh in that early ward clearing that we were watching him do. He was the one who gained control of the bottom side. Uh, they knew that there wasn't going to be threat from Pantheon there, and Power of Evil gets to play aggressively. Two and a half thousand gold the lead here for the Unicorns of Love. This is, I mean, we've not really mentioned it up until now, but it is at the end of the day a North America versus Europe battle, uh -huh. which uh, definitely a new one for the cards. As we see Santorin down on that bottom lane, he's actually recalling right now, though. And, you know, since we were wondering about these junglers, a any jungler that has Devour is happy in a farm game like this. If both of them are farming uh, really heavily, yep. then the Pantheon is definitely the one 
uh, missing out here. And yeah. Kikis is pretty happy with the way that this game is going. He's almost the second item here. I'm actually really happy with the way Unicorns of Love constructed this team composition against a first pick Pantheon. Uh -huh. Oh, man. I'll say oh. after Power People kills Bjergsen again. Yeah. One more auto attack. Oh, the Q will uh, finish him off. And Power of Evil. That was a question that Shocks asked earlier on to the, the manager, yeah. the coach of Power of Evil. And, well, we've seen it right here. Power of Evil is dominating him lane. Not only was the coach really confident in Power of Evil's ability to deal with Bjergsen, but Power of Evil, when he said, what did they want out of this tournament? He was like, yeah, we just wanted to win so that we could get to play TSM so I could play Bjergsen. And he got his wish, mm -hmm. and he is performing very admirably. Oh, oh, that hook actually going through there. Spell Shield will block out some damage. and doesn't really matter. It's going to be the Dragon going down. Busy Chachi are going to get transformed, but didn't follow through. Dyrus, a good 30 CS behind now in that top lane. Obviously, was, I'd say, pretty lucky at this point not to have died as well. Yeah, and it looks like Unicorns of Love continue to take control of this game, specifically through the mid lane of Power of Evil. But the success that they have had isn't just about the performance of Power of Evil or even the early gank by Kikis. It goes all the way back to the pick and ban. Twisted Fate was actually the third pick on the side of Unicorns of Love, and that made Bjergsen feel safe about picking Xerath because he doesn't need to worry about facing LeBlanc, who is tremendously effective against Xerath. She can dash all the skill shots, get in close, and finish you off. Who the heck expects a jungle twisted fate? Bjergsen is completely countered in this matchup uh, because of the pick ban wizardry that Unicorns of Love put together. On top of that, I was going to get into the Pantheon jungle. What lane is Pantheon supposed to gank here? The all comes down, LeBlanc jumps away. You try and get a Thresh, he jumps away. Maybe this one, but he's pretty tanky. He is pretty tanky, but the Lost Boys there as well. They throw the exhaust in, and Vizzy Chachi is in a lot of trouble. Three men on top of him. Santorin will actually pick up his first kill here on TSM, and their first kill of the game. Meanwhile, Bjergsen taking a lot of damage. Will Power of Evil get the cooldowns back? Oh. Yes, he will. Finishes off. Twisted Fate actually top lane. uses ultimate there as well, and has gone top lane to pick up a kill onto Dyrus. Two kills simultaneously on the board there for Unicorns of Love. And this is another thing about people going away from building Athenes. No magic resist in kill. the mid lane. Oh, he's got... He's, cir he's, <gasps> he's been circled. Oh, Stone actually going down. Flash throw kick is, He's going to turn got this him. one around. Gets the kill. It will be traded off, though. <laughs> wow. Hey, it's worth it right there. You knew that's what Santorin was thinking there, trying to block the turrets with his shield and avoid Kikis, but he throws out so many auto attacks, you only get to block one, and then he can't always get the turrets if he's landing the right autos. Oh, I see this thing as well, trying to stop Wild Turtle from going home. It means that this turret is be gonna, uh, gonna fall as well. That was Vardax finishing off, and that's the second one of the game for Unicorns of Love. Five and a half thousand gold. Their lead here as we approach the 20 minute mark of this game, looking very, very good for the new boys in the European LCS. Yeah, so what they definitely need to do now is uh, bolster their vision control inside the jungle. They've got an extremely fed LeBlanc right now. All that you need when you have a Blanc, this uh, fed, is that you just have to get some vision control because the it makes TSM have to play really, really scared. The probability that you can get picked off and 100% by that LeBlanc is really high for pretty much everybody except maybe Turtle because he has Spell Shield. Well, we'll see how much that actually helps him out in the grand scheme of things. Wits End is done, by the way, for Kikis on Twisted Fate. Vardag's been cheeky here, trying to steal away that red buff. Scrying up does come down. He needed one more auto attack there, I think, as we see them again moving towards Dyrus in this top lane. Vizzy Chachi a little bit low. There's the ultimate out of Dyrus, and it's going to stop any pressure of a kill, but they'll lose the turret, the fourth one, uh, sorry, the third one, if I could count, of the game. <laughs> Yeah, just a lot of control here by Unicorns of Love, but a slight vulnerability opened up. TSM saw three top, trying to take a mid turret. Nice little turnaround. We'll give them a bit of gold back as the Cullin comes out. Maybe slightly too late there. Would have wanted to get down, although you have to feel that turret was going either way, even if they'd have had to tank up a couple of hits from it. So why does that leave us? Seven two-in kills spread between Twisted Fate and LeBlanc. And we'll see. If TSM can really fight this, I mean, at this point, can they even fight them? And you look at the item disparity there. 
Maybe. If they can get a good rumble up down and Santorin could somehow close during a right team fight, then yes, they could fight them. But honestly, that's not going to happen with the way Unicorns of Love is playing. They're getting the picks where they need them. LeBlanc can solo anyone. And honestly, Kikis kind of can too. Yeah, so it certainly is dangerous because both teams have these global ults for their junglers. I mean, if TSM could find a numbers advantage engage, then they have a lot of long-range damage as we went over uh, that they can use to capitalize on that and actually finish off a kill. You know, either Dyrus or Xerath just being in the area of a small skirmish uh, would help, but they would probably have to catch Unicorns of Love off guard at this point. As Vizzy Chachi going back into his top lane to get that farm before surely returning to the tribush and getting rid of that ward that's just gone down. There is Kikis getting the wards, maybe, if they go over that one. There they do finally spot oh. that one. And that will indeed be the vision again, cleared out by Unicorns of Love. Harrison still waiting there for a hook over the side. Let's see if he gets it. Dangerous though, there are four men there from TSM. There is a screen on coming out of Bjergsen. There's also one on Wild Turtle now as well. But yeah. they're spread here, UOL. They need to possibly react to TSM's push or not. They've backed off. There's 35 seconds till Dragon. That's where it's all going to be about. In a controlled team fight, because the Sivir Jana, the way TSM has built their composition here, they can still have a chance at a comeback here. But if they don't have vision control, which they do not, and they can't get into that choke cleanly, then they have no chance. There is Vizzy Chachi once again causing a few issues as the fight does start in that middle lane. And this thing is a little bit low there. Power of Evil also at half HP, but again, it's four versus four. Both top laners have teleport available. Vizzy Chachi actually walked all the way down as a dragon spawns. It's Unicorns of Love that are backing away onto it. And Darius just went back to base. He does have teleport, but no vision inside the pit. This should probably be going over to He's Unicorns gone. as well. Number two. I feel like I'm a little bit stunned here, and a lot of the crowd <laughs> in San Jose is also stunned. They're thinking, all right, this European team just barely qualified for the LCS. Yeah, we saw them earlier today. They did okay against Lion Gaming. Everyone's talking about TSM being the favorites for this tournament, and they just completely mind game them in picks and bans and they're executing this twisted fate and leblanc combination together so well and that's what i said at the end of that first game today that yes unicorns of love didn't look amazing in their victory over lion but what were they saving for the semi-final against tsm and so far well obviously the twisted fate pick completely mind gaming them out of the picks and bans but overall they've just looked a lot stronger up until now we have to say it on the, on the same token though that it wasn't the early mid game that looked troublesome for unicorns of love it was turning that lead that they had into a victory yeah we'll have to see because bjergsen has grown into a pretty decent shot caller uh, it took him a long time and he had a a rough patch there but from all the intel that we've gotten from people scrimming against them, uh, TSM's late game has gotten a lot better and their shot calling has gotten much clearer. So this is a really good test for him because under duress, can he still make the same uh, clutch calls? Like they're, they're definitely down in gold and he's working with less. So they are the ones who have to pull out something. Oh, pink ward down. Double ward from TSM over the top there. And actually one of them will be cleared out. Second one will follow here shortly as well. And this thing. Taking a lot of poke damage, actually, from Bjergsen. The beauty of having that Zerath. But look at this. He's close to coming. He's going to transform here in just a second. But what can he do with it? Let's see. Actually, he's going to push back here and having to take the lantern. The rest of his team are already backed away. Now we have to see, will TSM try and take advantage once he his rage bar depletes here? Because TSM, they have the chase down with Sivir. They have the Pantheon ult to, in, to force to engage. They have long range AP damage. If they want to fight, they will force a fight. This TSM team is very, very strong at forcing. Uh, and really, they have to work around the Gnar rage bar because Gnar is so strong right now. He will be a ridiculous front line. Yeah. if he gets the, the right timing for the fight, and he has Meganar close. I feel like TSM is going to try and play the long game right here. Honestly, yes, they can force fights, but because the gold deficit is so large, I think they just need more time. I think they want Bjergsen to be able to finish Void Staff and Death Cap. I, Wild Turtle probably wants to get to a point where he can potentially take down Nar, and for that, I think they have until five dragons <laughs> at that point. They are currently at two. And that gives them until about 40 minutes before they'd 
basically just straight up lose. They're, they're in a lose-lose situation in so many ways, but I think that's where TSM's going to go here. Well, they may be able to catch out the support. Actually, Ultimate oh, comes out of Dyrus, nice. and really, Sang is down, and that's the kind of thing that they need to do. We even see the man drop as well coming towards Vardax. He will flash instantly, though. Didn't want to risk being locked up there by Sansory. Meanwhile, though, Power of Evil is pushing this top lane. Opportunistic pushes always work right there. Hillisang way out of position, and LeBlanc, of all people, pulling off this split push doesn't push very fast, but TSM got that wave cleared quick. Oh, here comes Vizzy Chachi, though. Will be able to transform here in just a second. Power of Evil also making his way across. Is flash. Vizzy Chachi going to go for this one? Power of Evil has been spotted on the side, and I think they've waited a little too long for this one. Needed LeBlanc there as well, and TSM rightly so backing out. Good spell shield block there. Not going to be a hard engage because, as we said, they're working well around the rage of that Nar. And now, since they got their small win, they didn't overextend. That's really the key uh, because it's very easy for this team. Mm -hmm. Even when you're behind like that, after you get a kill, that bloodlust that goes through <laughs> you uh, to overextend afterwards. TSM pull back, rightfully, and they're able to defend their turret. Let's see if they can actually swing bottom, though. Unicorns of Love make it a strong move. Yeah, they need to get down there quickly for this one. There will be a four-man team. There's the shield out of Lost Boy, but I think they're going to have to give this one up already down to half HP. Turtle's going to come in, and it just won't be enough for them. A nice little play of the map there by Unicorns of Love. It allowed them to get wards down on that bottom side while they went as well. Ooh, and LeBlanc with DFG completed as well. Mm. So much burst potential here from Power of Evil. You have to be really, really careful, even defending under your turret because she can pop really in really quickly and just get a large chunk of damage on a single target to force you out of the fight. Let's not forget how farm Kikis actually is. The amount of magic resist he has with that on-hit build, 165 MR with 2,000 health. If you're Bjergsen or Dyrus right now, that's kind of a tank that can duel you really easily. The only person that I think stands a chance against him in a 1v1 is Wild Turtle. And even then, if his spell shield is down, when the Twisted Fate decides to go in, it could be rather devastating. We were really curious about how this Twisted Fate was going to transition. Because, yeah, he's a really short-range auto-attacker, but if he stacks MR and can somehow avoid the physical damage, you know, kind of engaging after Santorin engages so he's not in range of Pantheon stuns, he could actually perform decently in the midst of a team fight. Well, he massively outscales Pantheon, just yeah. tremendously, especially with Devour already. Uh, can't see how Last many stacks, I saw but it, it was, was around 30. He, it's probably higher, 41 now. He's From here on out, especially, he is just going to continue to outscale that Pantheon. We saw that TSM trying to set up a trap to lure in the Unicorns of Love, and makes sense, 10 seconds until the next Dragon comes up. You expected that they might wait until Dragon number five. We'll see. TSM actually yeah. moving down there already. Well, if they can get vision control, which they kind of have, then they're not at as much risk for a LeBlanc assassination. But boy, 8,000 gold coming into this one. Oh. They're going. Oh, there's a Rumble Ultimate, and really catching Vizzy Chachi a little bit, taking him down to half HP. There's a call in Power of Evil. We'll try and dive in. It didn't really get much damage off, Making though. Our Power of Evil actually using his ultimate there. That's a good Howling Gale coming through. Kikis is going to turn around. Power of Evil comes back in, but he's exhausted. It's Tyrus that were the first target. They managed to get that kill. Power of Evil surviving off the other side. Kikis flashes in. There is Vizzy Chachi. Gets the four-man ultimate as well. And now Vardix comes in. Mock more. What can they get here? TS once again into the back line. It's only Lost Boy left alive. He'll be closed down. Power of Evil should be able to finish this one off. And there it is. And it is an ace for the Unicorns of Love. A triple kill going over to Power of Evil. And he didn't even lose one man. And that is going to be the dragon on top of it. What a fight from Unicorns of Love. The beginning of the fight was actually played pretty well by TSM. They played around the rage mm -hmm. bar really well, kiting back when, it went, when he went into Meganar. But but then, Dyrus got a little bit too far out front, got caught. This is going to be not only Dragon, but another turret here and a large minion wave on the top side of the inhibitor turret. And it's chain stuns too, so once you get caught in a position for a little while, you're basically dead. Twisted Fate stun, LeBlanc tether, as well as the Thresh Hook can all be comboed in. And even though they played around the Rage Bar, 
because of the extended stuns, they overstayed him. Vizichachi got a great gnarl. Yeah, so I thought they were going to look for a Rumble Ultimate in the corner. Right here, it seemed all right. But it's but already I mean, down. The Rumble Ult was already down. The great exhaust on power people at the start, but it's the chain stun onto Darius that ended up keeping TSM in this fight longer than they should have been. And then here's the beautiful flash in. Oh, no, he didn't even have to flash. Yeah, he did. There oh. it is. The hop of that flash gets everybody with that NAR CC. And that's the biggest bonus that you get for picking NAR. TF again, as you said, so much uh, continued chase there for this team. Not going to be able to get away. Bad news for TSM, that's for sure. 12 3 up in kills now, the Unicorns of Love. And the gold, well, it's a lot. 30 minutes in, over a 10,000 gold lead. What are Unicorns of Love going to do now? They've got not quite full vision control. There's a ward from TSM inside of that death brush. So, Baron, I don't know, always a risky play. <laughs> well, I mean, we've seen today already that, well, funnily enough, against the Zerath, that you might always have a few little issues with that. But Unicorns of Love are trying it, doing it right here, getting the wards down on the top side of the TSM jungle. Against the 050 Zerath, that's with true. the Morella Namicon Void Staff only. It's going to be really hard for uh, Bjergsen to even get in position yeah. close to that Baron. And they can't there check because of LeBlanc. That's the biggest thing. If anyone goes There's to LeBlanc try and get a ward. There's LeBlanc doing action right now. Yep. Oh, or down not. Not. This could be bad. Unicorns of Love say no. Evacuate. Evacuate as we they do see Pantheon. the colors. Here's the man drop coming down. Flash again over the wall. Zerath ultimate. All oh, three wow. jobs landing. Bjergsen picking up that one, but what did TSM do now? They've taken down two men. Do they go straight to Baron? What's the call? They're going to push mid. mid. He's picking yeah. mid right now. Bjergsen's making the call. They're going with the safer route. They do not want to take that chance of Baron going down to the other team. They take, again, they, they get another small win. They're not trying to overextend. They take the very easy objective here. They're going to grab the turret money, take that back home, and take the small incremental uh, steps back towards an even game. I really have to know how Power of Evil died without killing anybody. Because the amount of damage he has, he didn't even look like he used his DFG there. I thought he'd be able to zone out and kill very easily. What Let's take a went look. wrong here? He dashes in. He's oh, stunned. Bjergsen. He dashed straight into the Zareth stun. Totally outplayed, basically, by Bjergsen having the stun right there. Yeah. And then, as we said, it's so hard to get away from this TSM team. Silver ult goes off. Pantheon ult goes off. They get another with some beautiful shots from Bjergsen. All three Zareth ults hitting. That's so rare. You, it's, it's extremely rare. We've seen several games today already with Zareth ultimates where all three miss. And that's what you've got to be able to do at this level. I mean, you go 0-5-0, and when it matters like that, you hit all three charges of your ultimate. Mm -hmm. We'll see, though, how that all continues, because once again, the Unicorns of Love are on the top side of the map. This time, there's no... Actually, is, is that a ward in the back of the Baron Pit? It is from TSM, so they do have vision of that backside, and not sure that the Unicorns of Love are quite ready to go for that one again. You could say that Power of Evil may be just thinking, okay, that can happen. A little bit unlucky diving in, the stun landing as it did. But we'll see how confident they are. Pushing out that top lane for now. Pink Ward was put in the back of the Baron Pit, and I think that will actually use as a scan there because the Pink Ward is more in river, but they've got full vision control of the Baron Pit now. Yeah, three of their team's Pink Wards are all in close proximity of each other. I think they're going to continue to do this play Except this time, Two scrying Power though. of Evil doesn't get randomly there goes one. killed. They know exactly where they're doing, but they just can't get there in time. I think it's dead. Yeah, already gone down. It's the Unicorns uh -oh, of Love, the pick of the first Baron. Bjergsen moving around the side. There's a flash hook. They managed oh, to no. catch out Lost Boy. What will happen here? The box actually not catching him. Twisted Fate will ulti. Who is he going to go Ooh. for? He gets a stun up there, and he will know. Actually pulls off the lantern. Will he fall there in the end? There's the ultimate from Bjergsen to snipe off Kikis. Well, that might be it here. We see Busy Chachi. They managed to slow and hook Dyrus. That gives us a two for one in favor of the Unicorns of Love. Now they're on to Bjergsen. Bjergsen, Vizzy Chachi, blown back though by the monsoon. Wild Turtle gets a bit deep. There is Vizzy Chachi diving underneath the turret. We see Vardax coming in from the side. Power of Evil in there as well. He will actually be able ace. to pick up the kill. And they get the ace. It's a delayed ace, but an ace nonetheless. A sufficiently chaotic team fight, one would say. All starting with the Panthen ultimate and still not yet ending. They might want this inhibitor since it's just Santorin trying to defend. Yeah, if they want it, they're going to take it here. Death timer is a little bit too long. It looks like they are going to stay and grab the extra super minions for themselves. Empowered recall should enable them to get back very quickly and shove another lane with that Baron buff. 
And there they go. All back home with decent goal to spend as well. Let's have yeah. another look at well, that one. This all started really strangely because Santorin ulted in since they had absolutely no control on the Baron vision, was hoping for a steal, but the Baron is already gone. So immediately the fight is a disaster to begin with. At this point, though, Dyrus actually puts down a pretty good ultimate and nearly turns the fight around. Yeah, so Dyrus and Bjergsen react to the CF well ultimate immediately, and they almost kill him. Then they even get enough distance for Bjergsen to uh, proc his ultimate and then shoot him to snipe for the last kill here. He also answers uh, Power of Evil and gets him back uh, to back out of the fight. But again, another beautiful hook there. Thresh is able to grab the extra kill and enable them to push all the way through. So Baron for the Unicorns of Love following Ace, and now they're going to be taking another Dragon. Is this number four? Yep. Number four. Even though we don't have a thing in the spectator delay right now, if you look down on the bottom left for the viewers out there, you can see the Dragon buff on the left now has a four next to it if you're watching in higher resolution. So just for it and in the interim until the graphic gets made. One is on the way. The top men are on it. <laughs> the top men. <laughs> so you, Kobe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Kobe's home in Microsoft I'm, Paint. I'm scribbling. Sketching out <laughs> Dragon <numbers>. Dragon. <laughs> We can spell it right, that'll be a good start. <laughs> and he comes to love for you, pushing towards that second inhibitor. This time down the bottom lane, Power of Evil again, diving in, trying to get that damage into the back lines. Will TSM be able to hold on to this turret? Well, it's going to be a uh, tough work for them because they have Nar splitting and splitting with Baron buff, plus yep. their supers Two coming up the middle. Two of those big siege minions are going to do their stop. work. Yeah, it's just really... These inhibitors, uh-oh, they're all going down. Yeah. That one is gone. No real answer. Dyrus did try and get away. There's a GA there as well for Vizzy Chachi. So Dyrus probably doesn't have much chance of stopping this inhibitor going down. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, all the Unicorns of Love, are still pushing that bottom lane out as well. And this is going to possibly be all three inhibs going down. Yeah, here's Don't the thing about the Empower Baron minions. They can't get in range to clear the cannon, and they're already down two other inhibitors. The only way you stop a team from sieging at this point is if you fight them. But they're oh, too far behind. Dude, oh, they dive straight in there. There's two men going down instantly. Kick is going to go to the back as well. They finish off Bjergsen, and that is the ace. And this is going to be game number one of the semi-final here at the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose, going to the Unicorns of Love. Hey, beginning of the day, talking about how important the new jungle plus mid control is. Yep. And with all the hype here for Santorin and Bjergsen, it's actually, you know, Power of Evil and Kickus that come out with the early strong move at mid, and then they're able to use that to dictate pretty much the entire game. And here's the other thing we have to keep in mind. We are in the off season, even for Team Solo Mid, who was a team that attended the World Championship. It has been a long time since they've played in an Atlanta event like this, so the element of rust does kind of sneak, it, sneak in. The fact that Unicorns of Love had those two games earlier against Lion does make them a little bit looser, but honestly, it was the pick ban outplay. There's a, lot, there's a lot of work for the coaches here, and especially since they've got Loco you know, up there with the team now. Uh, he's going to have to be able to deal with the pick and ban phase at least next time around. Well, you only get surprised by Jungle Twisted Fate once. But now they can't be safe with who they pick in the mid lane because they actually don't know, you know, any ranged champion can now be a jungler, apparently, for Kickers. <laughs> and, yeah. and do you get rid of Nar, who that's the second great performance from Sansweet that we've seen on Nar today. Mm -hmm. Where do you focus your bans? I mean, do you take Twisted Fate out or do you say next time we're going to know that it's Twisted Fate? Well, let's Maybe send it over to the experts. <laughs> Good thing we have a desk to answer that question for us. Well, and that's what we're going to do then. We're going to go straight <laughs> over.